What is up, YouTube? We have Baltimore Regionals in two days. And so if you have not made up your mind, today we're going to be talking about, I think, three decks that are a little bit under the radar and could do really well uh, given the right metagame, given the right environment. Um, these are decks that you can choose to risk everything on and hopefully make a big splash, kind of high roll it, um, kind of a risky for the biscuit kind of angle. Uh, if you're not someone who wants to play the traditional Palkias or Muse or Arceus's down the line. These are a couple of decks that are a little bit under the radar. I mean, the third one isn't that off the off the radar, but like these are three decks that I think you guys can uh, get a little bit out of and they're a little bit budget and yeah. So um, let me know if you guys like stuff like this where I just do like two or three decks that are under the radar or like a little bit wild um, heading up to a big tournament because... I, I, I don't know, it seems kind of cool, but uh, I might just be wrong and off the mark here. But anyway, first off, the first deck I want to talk about is a deck that many players kind of wrote off, didn't even put on their radar, which is Vika Volta Ludicolo. We saw Tord Reklev and his group bring this deck to the World Championships, albeit they didn't have much success, but um, they saw something there. There was something in their testing. Um, this is the arguably one of the best players in the game. Their group all saw something with this deck where Vika Volt can use Paralyzing Bolt for 50 damage um, and set up a board where then you can kind of go to this Ludicolo, get the 100 extra damage, and then you have Raikou as a backup attacker. Now, with Raikou and Starmie as backup attackers for different scenarios and four Melanies as well as five Water Energies, you should be attacking on the first turn. And that's the whole idea behind this version of the Vika Volt deck, um, especially playing the four Quick Ball to be able to get to this... Um, to get to this much quicker uh if you are a little bit more on the wild side you could cut some i don't know some of the quick balls maybe ultra balls i don't know like make some space for vip passes if you want to but when you're playing the ludicolo package it feels like you don't have the space to do so um yeah you can also flop around some of the speed and basic lightnings if you want at your own discretion but i prefer having just speeds to just start drawing and getting those extra two because sometimes those plus two can make a big difference especially when you have cards like rotom phone uh, to kind of set your top deck before you kind of go in. Uh, so the the speed plus the Melanie leads, gets you five every turn, and the Mew lets you see some more cards. Now, our damage output's not necessarily the highest, but we do have the Cave of Toughness to keep us alive through most attacks. Um, one of the biggest things against decks like Palkia is to make sure we don't overbench, because if they fill our bench and we fill our bench, even if we have a cape, well, Vika Volt gets one shot, and we don't want that happening, because we want to be able to go Vika Volt, control the tempo, maybe take two Salvo Prizes, something of that nature, and then go into a one-shot with the super... Giga Cannon or whatever it's called. Um, and then pivot into the Raikou to kind of close out the game. Because Palkia decks can't really play around Lightning Rondo super well. Uh, because they always have Pokemon on their bench. Um, I really like having four copies of Scoop of Net. Maybe you don't need it. But I think it's just the best switch option for Mew. Plus uh, being able to reuse your Ludicolo and the Greninja. Um, you kind of need the Luminion and the Crobat to make sure you get to that turn one Melanie when you need it. Um, I think one Marnie is fine because you're going to be Melanieing a lot of turns. But... Maybe you can up this as well. The list is very tight, as you can tell. Uh, I kind of wanted to, I found a list that had like every option, really. And um, yeah, this is this is an under-the-radar deck if you enjoy doing small amounts of damage and kind of locking your opponent out of the game. I, I don't think many decks will have an answer to this um, if their list is not already pre-prepared for it. Uh, but it is a little bit of a fragile engine and a fragile deck. Second up is Inteleon VMAX. Now, Inteleon VMAX is a deck that I personally... Um, I'm a huge fan of, and I've always liked. The biggest issue being, obviously, that you are weak to Lightning type, and Flying Pikachu is one of the um, best decks in the format right now, if not the best deck in the format. Um, so that's not that's not great for us, but with the Big Charm, we can survive a hit, and if the Big Charm sticks, we can keep Sherling, or you can use our two Sherils in the Palpad to keep healing ourselves and hitting them with the G-Max Spiral and balancing the energy back to our hand. Um, that being said... Uh, RCS is also a little bit of an issue. That's why we play the 1-1 one, one Urshifu line to kind of make sure that we get there. With the four copies of Irida, we can basically search out everything in our deck, get to that turn one, keep calling um, pretty easily, being able to pull out our Inteleon, Urshi, Remoraid, whatever we need to pull out. Uh, and once the Octillery is established, we can virtually get anything we need. Like our entire attacking attacking core gets pulled out by the Octillery. Our energies get pulled out by the Octillery. Yes, there's no supporters like Karina's Focus in here. Um, just because they're just, it's just not good enough. Like... Being able to play the Italian engine and having access to one Raihan, one Melanie. Raihan, Melanie gives you... Like, Raihan, the Raihan is just really good for the Urshi. In case we want to just power that up out of nowhere. Or power up the Metacham out of nowhere. Um, and we have Roxanne and Boss. Now, what you could also do is 
maybe cut the mana fee and just say like, hey, I'm not worried about Palkia uh, Greninja-ing me on turn two. And you could play something like the Blastoise um, or even, uh, yeah, like Blastoise or Halucha or something to just get plus 30 damage because you play the Radiant Halucha and you can get the plus 30 damage with the Inteleon VMAX. You're not two-shotting a Pika instead of three-shotting it. So you can get one big charmed Inteleon into play and Cheryl it two times. You'll be able to two-shot a Pika and I think the game should be super easy from that point onwards. Um, even if they establish another Pika, you can pal pad Cheryl again and then just swing um, and, and keep the chain going in some capacity. Um, yeah, you can, you can even do the 140, 170 into a yoga loop play. Um, so you can kind of set up numbers in a much better way. Now, this deck is more of a fun deck, I think. Um, and if you're really, really risky, you can bring it. Uh, I, I, I've been fiending to bring back into Andy Max, so I don't know if I will. Uh, and this is the first region of the season, so uh, it's a clean slate. Everyone has points from the open, besides a couple players like me. So it's a clean slate for me. I have no expectations, nothing. Might might be a fiend, might bring it back, who knows. Uh, and third and finally, this deck is not necessarily the most fun. It's not necessarily the most flashy, but it does have a good placement right now in the better game. I feel like Arceus Duraldon has always been one of those decks where you have to play your researches, play your Marnies, just kind of draw into everything you need raw, get to that Starbirth turn two, get to that Trinity Nova or Trinity Charge turn two, power up your Duraldons, and then your opponents have a really tough time taking them down because of how big and beefy they are. The whole um, going through two Duraldon VMAXs is really hard for any deck to do um, in the current format just because of how beefy it is and how much damage that Duraldon can do back to you. Um, 220 is a very good number. It just always puts the pressure on. And, well, it's just very it's just very strong in its own right. So Duraldon has been um, criminally underrated, I think. It has a lot of potential. And I think there's a world where it can actually perform really well in this given meta because RCS Pika, yes, it plays 4-Path and all this stuff, 4-Path um, for money, but you are doing more damage than them, and you are playing healing cards, which they don't. So if you can outheal them, which in almost every scenario you can, um, you'll be ahead. And you have three Crystal Caves to bump their paths. And if they can't put a path down on that turn, they're not attacking into your Duraludon. Um, so Arc Pika becomes a decent matchup. If you can kind of get ahead against Palkia, you never lose the lead, because um, your bench is always going to be small. So you get that advantage as well. And I think if Mew continues to play their, like, only double turbo version, no fusion strike build. You're not even under the pressure early early game. And so like you literally get a free turn to do whatever you want. And giving Arceus Draw on a free turn is really scary. So this is one of those decks where I feel like if the stars align and everything goes its way, like if obviously the deck has to draw um, properly uh, on its own accord, but if the deck can draw properly on its own accord, this is one of those decks that I think could be a really good pick for this weekend, um, given everything. So this is like how I look at my decks uh, coming in like these are this is an honest like three decks that I think I could see myself playing because it's a meta call for this weekend and that's kind of the, the thought process I go through to kind of get to these things um, like on Tuesday Wednesday of the event I'll sit down and say what are people talking about what are people like what are rumblings going on in the background um, uh, and obviously I'm friends with a lot of people so I get to kind of hear opinions see opinions and um I don't know, like, I, 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 I kind of get to make my own judgment based on what I see on online results, what people are buying cards. Like, it, it's an information game at the end of the day, and um, making a meta call is really difficult. So, like, if I picked something like Arceus Duraldon, and I walked into the room, and everyone was playing some sort of basic energy deck, I would get clowned on, and that's that's what happens. But making a meta call is really impressive sometimes. Um, so, yeah, this is this would be three decks that I think are under the radar a little bit. Um, so... If you guys want to risk your biscuit for it, if you don't know where you are, completely lost right now, these are three options to kind of sit back and take a look at and be like, okay, maybe I can play some of these. Like, maybe I can play something like this. Um, yeah, I don't know. These are these are three cool cards. Uh, three cool decks, sorry. Um, Vika Vault was something I explored a lot before the World Championships with my group, and so I wouldn't mind doubling back on it, um, given that we have a more fleshed out metagame now. Um, and Arc Duraludon is something that has been on the back of my mind since... NAIC, or since Milwaukee, actually, after it won, um, because it doesn't really have a hard counter in some capacity. So um, I know I drove on for a little bit too long, but thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the support, as always. Baltimore will be this weekend. I might not have another video up this week um, before we go, but there will be a vlog. I do plan on continuing the vlog series. Um, and I do plan on doing a series called, like, 
Rahul's Road to Worlds 2023, where you guys will just see, I'll put all those videos into one playlist where you guys can see this season, what I've been doing, how my accomplishments are going. I'll do like a mid-season check-in with championship points um, and stuff like that uh, once we get like an invite structure, obviously. And so you can see an easier path to what a top 16 invite would look like, or if I fail for some reason, what a top, just like a regular invite would look like and and. Yeah, so you can document, I can document it for myself and I can document it for you guys. So, yep, that being said, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and yeah, we'll, we'll maybe have a video this week, maybe we won't. We'll see. See you guys.